Hey guys, before we dive into the show, I wanted to tell you about the perfect trailer queue blueprint, which is 100% free and you could download it right now over at thetrailermusicschool.com forward slash blueprint. Now this blueprint will help you to completely understand the structure of trailer music, how to build tracks that will be more licensable and have more impact and capture the right people's attention. So whenever you start writing a cue, make sure you've got this blueprint to hand and you can use it to help speed up your process, feel more confident that you've crafted a well-structured trailer cue before you send it off to that publisher or editor or supervisor. Okay, let's get into the episode. With one microphone. Welcome to the Trailer Music Composers Podcast. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the Trailer Music Composers Podcast. In today's episode, I wanted to give you guys another walkthrough of one of my tracks that landed. Um, Now this track was a track called Monument from Elephant Music's album Throat 4. And the trailer it got placed on recently was Archive 81, um, that new Netflix series. Now, little story about Throat 4. So obviously we had done Throat 1, 2 and 3 prior to this, each one being ever so slightly different than the rest. Throat 1 was kind of like the experiment. uh, And from there we gleaned that the cello was this cool leading instrument that we should make an album of. Bosch Throat 2 was basically cello riffs. Throat 3 was an ensemble of cellos and a double bass all recorded together playing riffs and then I sampled it up and created the tracks and it was very drum heavy Throat 3. Throat 4, um, <coughs> Vic had this great idea of, of chucking a throat singer. He said, why don't we just do throat singing on this one? Of which we did. Uh, and it was great fun. Uh, I have to say, like, I'm I, I'm a little sad that I toned down the throat singing so much. Uh, we had a lot more throat singing. I think we both maybe got a little bit scared that we were going too out there with lots of throat singing. So we toned it down a little bit. But this one track, Monument, is one where we didn't really tone it down. We kept it quite present in the track. Uh, and I think that's why this one has so much character to it, so much... Uh, Vavavoom, you know, it's uh, exciting. So what we're going to do is we're going to watch the trailer, see how it's used, see how it sits, what, see what my track is doing, and then I'll walk you through the track as it is. Here we go. We're looking for an artist. Someone who can restore a recently acquired collection of damaged videotapes. Well... Uh... What kind of damage? Fire damage. There's just one hitch. Because the materials are so fragile, they can't be moved. So you'd be doing the work at our remote research facility. Creating this archive, putting this puzzle together, well, it would mean the world to everyone who lost someone in that fire. some doors. Wish me luck. You hear it? Hear what? There's something in this place that calls to you. Hello? Hello? Good, you, you're doing okay. You said that you've been seeing things up here. Mark, I'm fine. I promise. What is going on in this building? What kind of game are you playing? Who are you? We're pioneers of the imagination. We're going to succeed. 
but time. Opie is one. Please, please find me. Boom! There we go. Um, man, it's so exciting. I still like pin- have to pinch myself when I watch some trailers. I'm like, ah, oh, that's so exciting. Um, right. So, how was my track functioning? So let's talk about it first. There was that lovely. Now, sort of- Rachel, tell the uh, Sulkin brothers I'm going to be a little late for that <laughs> meeting. Uh, hold on. Anyway. <laughs> there was that lovely uh, intro track, which was this kind of lovely soft f- uh, flute and organ, you know, that was kind of setting this mysterious and curious vibe. You know, Ooh, what's happened to these tapes? I wonder what trouble this man is in for. You know, that type of thing. And then Bosch, it stops. And then we get this curiosity where it's like, Dum! um, well, I can tell that they took my, uh, actually, I think, yeah. Yeah, it's called a Temple Gone, but it's actually my guitar. Uh, if you can see it in the background. Oh, no, I've put it back in my garage. It's one I've, I, I tied an, a, uh, a nut to the string so that when you played it, it was an old nylon string guitar, so when you played it, the, kind of, the metal of the, the nut vibrated and created this lovely gong sound. It's a really great trick if you want to have some fun with, a guitar, with an old guitar, tying things to the strings, wrapping them around. So, which kind of, again, this kind of sets this like, wait a second, bad stuff's happening, and then it kind of cuts into... Thing. You know, so you've got this lovely kind of like uh, the chanting gives it this kind of cult like feel, which I really liked. Uh, and then obviously the the second the ramp up into the act three. Although I think they took out took out a couple of things, which is you know usual. I, I'm 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 not at all. Uh, sad about things being taken out or added to my tracks because I'm very just glad that I was able to supply something that was able to lift these productions to where they are. I can't remember what Act 3 sounds like. <laughs> oh, classic me. Um, so Is that a tempo change? Yeah, tempo change, yeah. Okay, so uh, what I'll do is I'm going to play through the whole track just so you guys can have a listen to it, see how it's... Uh, functions see how it works and then i will talk you through the individual moments so um, before i do that i just want to say like with this i with most of these tracks on throat far throat four i recorded almost everything with my voice first um or at least a huge amount of there we go i think uh, i think i've muted everything but um I recorded almost everything with my voice just to get the vibe down. And then we got the singer to replace me in some instances. And uh, yeah, uh, so let's have a listen.
says, <laughs> he says with a cough, still got a bit of a cough. My apologies. Um, so there we go. Um, let's get to start with, I think this was the start of the queue. Oh. Yeah, so that was how I wrote the cue. So I'm going to solo all of these. Solo. Um, I just made up the chant. Uh, uh, the the chant was like um um mani um neo. <laughs> you know, I just wanted it to sound a little bit like kind of like um mani pad me on, but you know. Not the same. Uh, yeah, so that was me. Believe it or not, I've never smoked. Uh, it does sound particularly growly in that one. And then this was the throat singer taking on some awesome, like... Uh, <laughs> I mean, you can hear how much better that guy sounds than me, right? <laughs> but that was that was the, the the gist of this cue. That was just like I want to get everything in my voice, sort of setting the tone of this kind of like almost like walking into a Tibetan temple and stumbling on these uh, Tibetan throat whistlers and monks all chanting in the same room. You know, that was the type of vibe I wanted. And that's why I, I kind of started with this kind of like gong sound I got from my electric, my uh, treated guitar. And then obviously I had all these other vocal elements I wanted to use. Um. <laughs> That sounds great. I mean, I love that stuff. It's amazing what you can do. I mean, this was my vocals were all recorded using this podcasting mic, which isn't a great mic to do studio recordings with, but it got the creative juices flowing. Then what was my next step? Well, my next step generally uh, is to record the drums, uh, to play them in. And there's nothing crazy here. I want the Tycho's to be the main thing sticks again to kind of stick with that kind of eastern vibe and I want them just to kind of like focus on give me a steady beat basically like one on the beat on the bar on every other bar you know and then the sticks would be there the sticks and some I think it's these juns So I put all that together with the chanting. I mean, you can kind of hear that that in itself is pretty much what they use on the trailer queue. I mean, they took some other elements. So the next step for me was to get my violin and my cello out and add in some badly played string stuff, just mimicking what I heard in the existing track. So the cello mimicking the chanting, the violin mutes mimicking the um, sticks. Same thing again, just keeping the beat basically. I mean, there are moments when I actually play in time, but, you know. <laughs> I quite like the craziness of it. Um... So you can hear how I am literally just mimicking what I've already written with the chant and with the st and with the drums on the violin and the cello. And then it was just a case for me of adding in a couple of sort of little elements, like a reverse piano. Mm -hmm. 
which just reminds me of Eye of the Tiger whenever I hear it. Um, one of my string risers, just because, and then a bass pizzicato to really sort of underpin what's happening with the stringed instruments. I mean, if I take that and put the drums in, and then the... kind of what they've taken um, to this last bit. From what I hear, they haven't touched my third act. And I'm okay with that, because they use my second act as their second and third act in the trailer. Um, now, what was, what was it that this track did well in the trailer it set the tone of the chanting which is that kind of cult-like thing you see in the series it set the tension with the chanting and with the riser and it had atmosphere and character straight away I mean, and the drums were just functioning just to give it that impact trailer impact trailer size trailer scale uh you know, I'm absolutely flattered whenever one of my tracks gets used, but it's really nice when you can completely understand the connection between it and specifically the chanting in this this kind of horror series or thriller series. Uh, now, what are your takeaways from this? Uh, apart from actually, like, I, you know, I personally, I don't actually think that the violin and cello are really adding, it, adding anything. I think that was me just feeling a little bit like... I should put the violin and cello in because it's throat and throat got well known because of the cello and the violin. And I think that was a bit naive of me because actually listening back. I mean, that kind of does all the business really, doesn't it? That's, that's, that's the meat and potatoes of this track. So I think your takeaways here are don't let your fear of, and your own, uh, should haves uh, and own expectations of what a track should be change what the track is going to be if that makes sense like for for me like I said I was scared that not having cello in would be like against the rules of throat so I put it in there um, and I think had I done that I think it might have been a, an even stronger album uh, in places, particularly with this track, with the chanting. Uh, with regard to your drum writing, it can be incredibly simple, and often it often is. Save the bigger drums for fewer hits. The smaller the drum gets, the faster they can play. Um, that's not just a uh, a rule for drums. It's also kind of a rule for any large instruments. Larger instruments generally can't play fast without it becoming quite muddy. And that's that. if that's the effect you want, great. But in this instance, I didn't. I want the big drums to emphasize the downbeats of every other bar or every, you know, four bars. I wanted the medium drums to emphasize, you know, every bar or, you know, or a little fill into every bar and then the sticks to supply the pace, the build and the tempo. Uh, and also the other thing is, don't be afraid. Oh, lots of talking about fear today, aren't I? Don't be afraid. I think it's because I've just finished writing Throat 6 and I was very conscious of having the same fears writing Throat 6. Um, don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone and try something different, And which I'm proud of myself for doing in this one, which was I, I wrote, sketched every cue with just my mouth by my mouth being the drums, my mouth being the bass, my mouth being the chanting, the risers, the reverses, etc. Not that everything made it into the final track, but it it kind of got me thinking differently and got me excited about writing this album. Uh, and I think that's the one of the a really important lesson for you guys to learn is to kind of keep that excitement flowing with your tracks because that energy goes into it. Um, as usual, thank you very much for listening and or watching. Uh, you guys are absolute legends for taking the time to, uh, you know, join me. And I hope you got something out of this kind of reveal of 
uh, my track Monument from the Archive 81 train. I will see you guys next week.